Keywords, functions, operators. Computer programs are filled with a lot of stuff. In this video, I'll describe some of the essential features of a computer program. Pretty much any computer program in pretty much any modern mainstream programming language. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my course on the essentials of programming. The computer programs that we write in a text editor are constructed using words and symbols. The actual words and symbols we use will be different depending on which programming language we are working with. This is Object Pascal. This is C Sharp. This is Go. These three programs do the same thing. They prompt a user to enter a name. Then they call a function, that is a named block of code called put in upper, to change the name into uppercase. Then they display the uppercase name as output. Now let me quickly summarize some of the building blocks of this code. First, functions. Functions are subroutines, that is, named blocks of code. They help divide our programs up into manageable chunks for easy reuse. Every time I need to do a certain calculation or some string processing, such as setting a string to uppercase, I can write one function and call it, well, whenever I need it. So I don't have to write the same code time after time. Keywords. While you can do many of the same sorts of things in languages as diverse as C Sharp, Pascal, Python, Ruby and Go, the special words, the keywords that each language uses are different. For example, in Pascal, I have to declare this function using the word function, followed by its name. Here, function is a keyword of Pascal, which means it's a name with a special meaning in the Pascal language. In the Go language, I use the keyword funk. In C sharp, I don't need the word funk or function. I just put the data type, which here is string, of the value that's returned by the function. Now, while the differences between these languages may be obvious, you should also notice the similarities. All three languages use functions, and they also use keywords. In Pascal, the word function is a keyword. In Go, func is a keyword. In C, C Sharp and Java, there are no special keywords to mark a function. We just put the name of the function preceded by the type of data that the function returns. For example, it might return an int, that is, an integer. This is a C-sharp function that does that, it returns an int. If the function returns nothing, we say it's void. And in fact, void here is a keyword. So when a function does return a piece of data, in many, but not all, languages, we put the return keyword before the piece of data that's returned by the function. So in all these languages, there are keywords, which are sometimes called reserved words. They're words that have a special meaning in that language. Operators. Another very common feature in programming languages are operators. An operator is typically a symbol of some kind that's used to do some common operation, such as adding or subtracting two numbers, using the addition operator or the subtraction operator or multiplying and dividing numbers using the multiplication and division operators, or assigning a value to a variable using the assignment operator. Again, the actual operators may be different in different languages. Most languages use the same mathematical operators, but they don't all use the same assignment operator. This is the C-sharp assignment operator, a single equal sign which is also the assignment operator in many other languages, but not in all languages. This is the Pascal assignment operator, colon equals. Programming languages also need operators to test for equality. Is variable one equal to variable two? In C-like languages, such as C-sharp and Java, two equal signs are used to test for equality, but in Pascal, a single equal sign is used. Comments. Another thing you'll see often in program code is a comment. A comment is a piece of explanatory text, which is ignored by the compiler. Again, different languages use different comment delimiters. Most C-like languages mark multi-line comments between pairs of backslash 
and asterisk symbols like this. A single line comment is marked with a pair of double backslashes and the comment ends at the end of the line. Object orientation. Many languages today use object orientation. Put simply, object orientation lets the programmer put data, that's variables and so on, plus behavior, that's functions or methods, put them all together inside little programming constructs called objects. Usually objects are created from object definitions called classes. A class is a bit like a blueprint. You might have just one blueprint or plan for a car, but you can then build hundreds of different cars, actual working cars, from that single blueprint or plan. With object orientation, you might write one class, say a class that defines a treasure in a game. But then you can create hundreds of separate treasures based on that class definition. Now, if you want to explore object orientation in depth, I recommend that you follow my course on programming a text adventure game. In that course, I explain how to create an object-oriented, exploring-style game in either Java or in c -sharp. That course really gets into the nitty-gritty details of object orientation. It shows you how to build a deep class hierarchy with classes that inherit the features of their ancestor classes, so that it becomes possible to create a rich network of user-defined objects. And I've also written books on programming in several object-oriented languages, such as Java, c -sharp, Delphi, that's Object Pascal, and Ruby. And they will help you if you're coding in one of those languages. Thanks for watching. To get notifications whenever I upload new lessons, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon.